welcome to Health Talk. I'm Lauren Green. Studies show some brains are actually hardwired for addiction. Whether it's drugs, alcohol, or even food, it's all about how the brain registers pleasure. And my guest today battled a drug and food addiction, but found a way to rewire the brain to lose weight and gain back control. Dr. Susan Pierce Thompson, a neuroscientist and author of Bright Line Eating, the Science of Living Happy, Thin, and Free, joins me now to explain. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you, Lauren. It's great this to be here. This is so interesting. So tell me about your battle with food addiction. Oh, it started young. Um, I was kind of a normal weight kid, which I'm very grateful for, but I got fat right away, and I knew I would. I knew, <laughs> I knew those pounds would whack on. And at first I was okay because I was just so grateful to be out from the underworld of and the drug addiction and, and, and alive. Right. But then the excess pounds plagued me, and I struggled with my food addiction for so many years. But you, you, this book is called Bright Line Eating. What is bright line eating, and how, how can it help people actually lose weight? Bright lines are clear, unambiguous boundaries that you just don't cross. So if someone's alcoholic and they go to AA, they throw up a bright line for alcohol. They're not going to drink no matter what. With smoking, we do it too. If we're going to quit smoking, we're not going to have one every now and then and just smoke less. We're going to have a bright line for cigarettes. And in bright line eating, I argue that the way some people's brains are wired means they need a bright line for sugar and flour. Wow. Wow. You know, it's very interesting because when we talk about diet plans, most diet plans say, oh, eat healthy and exercise. But your plan doesn't have any exercise. Why? Yeah, I actually recommend people don't exercise at the beginning. Several reasons. Now, just at the beginning, I know exercise is great and I want people to get back to it later. But while you're first starting a weight loss program, it's important to rest because weight loss is toxic. All your fat cells are shrinking and pushing toxins into your bloodstream mm -hmm. in huge quantities, and it's exhausting. And you only have so much willpower at your disposal. And research shows that exercise is pretty useless for weight loss. It's good for weight loss maintenance later, ah. but if you burn up your willpower getting to the gym and being in the gym, what happens is something called the compensation effect, where you swing by for a muffin and a latte after the gym <laughs> because, because you I deserve it, out. because I just worked out, exactly. <laughs> and what happens then is those exceptions ultimately derail your entire effort. You've got to save enough willpower to make the food habits automatic. Three, four months after you've started, if you've been doing it right, your food habits are automatic, like brushing your teeth, and then it's time to get back to the gym. You know, my, my husband will be very happy to hear about this. <laughs> uh, but is this diet plan for everyone? I mean, that's really one of the questions. Can everybody fit into this? I, I don't think so. I th it, first of all, it's only for people who want it, right? We were okay. just, you know, discussing earlier. If someone wants to keep eating their ice cream and their pizza, it's not for them. And some people are going to prioritize, you know, I'm not sure I want to get thin and healthy. I would rather keep eating my ice cream and pizza. So it wouldn't be for them. And some brains aren't susceptible to the pull of addictive foods, and they can lose weight with just, you know, counting their calories and doing a program that includes all foods. It's really for brains that are higher on the susceptibility scale, mm -hmm. more susceptible to the pull of addictive foods. They're going to need a bright line. And when you're talking about brains that are susceptible, are we talking about something that they're born with or something that they develop? It's pretty genetic. Um, there also is some research showing that trauma in early childhood can lead to addictive susceptibility. But one third of brains are highly susceptible, one third of brains are moderately susceptible, and one third are not susceptible, and it's primarily genetic. Very interesting. Okay, so where can people get more information about the, uh, the Bright Line Diet? brightlineeating.com and they can take the quiz there to find out what kind of brain they have. Okay, once again the book is called Bright Line Eating uh, by Susan Pierce Thompson. Thank you so much Dr. Thompson for being here. Thank you so much. Okay, and if you have a health question, uh, send a tweet to Fox News Health. I'm Lauren Green and thanks for watching.